Welcome to the Flatlands Fuel and Fowl Podcast with your hosts, Dwayne Dirksen and Tanner Friesen. Stay tuned for all kinds of hunting talk, outdoors talk, various other topics. You're sure to have a good time, you're in good hands. Is education possibly a process of trading awareness for things of lesser worth? The goose who trades his is soon a pile of feathers. <laughs> Aldo Leopold. Interesting. I've never, uh, huh. I've never thought of that before. Well, I think I have thought of that, but not in that exact way. Yeah, I know. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you know, Aldo has, that guy's got pretty much unlimited quotes. <coughs> oh, I'd agree. I'd agree. Well, well, the man, the myth, the legend. The man, the myth, the legend, yeah. Big uh, contributor to the, what, New Mexico I think he's a big public contri- land. He's a big contributor to everything. But everything he had, he had a, conservation. Yeah, but he had a big part down there. Yep, yep, that he did. Even being from a northern state. Michigan, I think? Could be Michigan. Illinois, I don't know. One of those around the Great Lakes, I believe. Something like that. I'd like to go see them one day. I've flown over them. I've been to a few of them there. Family road trip years back. I mean, I don't really remember a whole lot, but yeah. I mean, so I've been, well, I've been to Toronto, so I've seen the uh, Lake Ontario, uh, Lake Ontario. Um, see, oh, I've been to Mackinac, so I guess I saw Superior and, you know, well, we've all seen Superior. Yeah. Anyways. Episode 13. Back again. Here we are. It's whitetail season. Little hiatus. Ah, not too bad this time. Boys have been busy. I mean, we're not Mark Kenyon or the meat eater guys. Stephen Ranella. Giannis. The Latin Eagle. Janice Poodleus. So, to start things off, I want to ask you a very serious question. All right, let's hear it. What is... Okay, now we're going to be talking. This is this is a white tail question. Okay. Very intuitive question. All right. I've been wondering this for a long time. Is this an opinion question? No. Okay. This is a fact based. This is question. a fact based question. Okay. Okay. What is the weirdest snack you've taken with white tail hunting? Hmm. Weirdest. Like Most interesting. Off the wall. Unusual. Um. Oh. I know what mine is. What's yours? Give me a minute to think on this one. <laughs> well, not too long ago, a few weeks ago, you know, I was kind of rushing in the morning. And I was looking for some healthy snacks to take with. So I yeah. packed out probably yeah, probably an apple, like normally a granola bar. I looked in the fridge and I saw, oh, there's a bag of washed lettuce. So I'm just going to take this bag of washed lettuce, throw it in the pack. I'm going to go sit and stand. Boy, I enjoyed that pack of lettuce. I've had crunch, crunch, crunch. I've had garden carrots. That's been uh, yeah. sesame seed, like those honey sesame seed bars, okay. or rice cakes. Rice cakes was a last minute. Like what was in the grocery store? Yeah, that's, that's light. Yeah, boom, rice cakes. So that's probably my interesting. A fella can't always be eating heavy. No, not in stand. Yeah, you're just sitting there. You're not gonna have steak dinner in stand. Oh, a fella would love to have a steak dinner in stand. That might be something to look into. Maybe. But I'd reckon, I'd reckon Booners wouldn't take too kindly to you eating their brother in the top of the tree. That, that might be more of a enclosed blind kind of meal. Yeah. Somewhere the scent doesn't speaking blow of, around. Speaking of which, I wouldn't mind uh, building one of those one of these years, but maybe that's for next year. I thought about that this summer and we never got around to it. On the land? On the land, yeah. I know of a spot where I'd like to put one. That might... Well, to be honest... To be My, honest, to be to be honest, no, yeah. Um, uh, my productive corner of the land there, that's taken three bucks out of there in the last two years. Two of mine, one of my brothers, 
it is not producing anything anymore. The picture, there's no pictures anymore because I'll tell you why. Because this year they had to put the cows in that part of the land for a good month and a half. Just to graze. Just to graze, but they were back in there a lot. Yeah. And the other part is the neighbor right across the fence line, which is real close by. You can see the fellow when he's going. He's been busy tilling his side of the fence line <laughs> every weekend for the past month. You've had, uh, yeah, you've had quite the running with with said character. So, I mean, I haven't talked to him or anything. I mean, I'm sure he's a fine fella, respectable gentleman. He's just out there working his land. Unbeknownst to him, that a fella's my tree stands right there, and yeah. I want to be hunting big old whitetails back there, but. <laughs> And, he, uh, and he's, I was, he's cultivating land. Yeah. So I was out there this morning and, well, I was sitting there and I, you know, it was very, very foggy this morning. Super foggy. You could barely see a hundred yards. Yeah. And I was sitting there for a long time and just nothing's going on. So like, okay, hey, I'm going to crawl down and walk the fence line. I get about 300 yards down there and all of a sudden I was walking just slow. I was looking for sign and. Usually there's sign and beds there, but you can't really see beds now because the cat like it's still rampage from the cat yeah, from the cows. Yeah, everything's pushed down. And but you could you would be able to see uh, rubs and scrapes though, and just nothing. And usually years past, there's always that fence line is loaded with beds, rubs, and scrapes. So saw nothing. I'm walking, still looking for sign. Yeah. Lo and behold, what do I hear behind me? Oh, there's the tractor and cultivator, and he's buddy on a John Deere just. Breaking land. Yeah. I think it's an Alice, but... Oh, well. Yeah, you know, whatever. So... That's... I guess that's the hard part of hunting a lot of private land is you have to deal with stuff like that. Especially in farm country. Yep. Where yep. guys have cows and... Guys are still making a living off the land, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, kudos to him for putting in work. It's just... It just makes things tough for... For me, but I'm just a small fish in the pond. I mean, I don't own that land anyway, so. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. So, yeah, well, that's that's kind of a good way to lead into it. How's your whitetail season gone so far? Whitetailing, how's your fall season going well, we'll between see. whitetail and goose? Well, that's a little mid, mid-season report. Well, my, my time spent on the land, I'm not going to tell you guys where this land is. Say southeast Manitoba, yeah. close to the border. Um, it's been a drag, man. I've literally seen. Uh, one morning when I was rolling in, early September, I saw two does on the field on the hay field. Yep. And as I was driving by, I usually like to drive by, turn around further down the road, and then come back. And they buggered off as soon as I drove by. Like, oh, great. Anyways, I hunted that morning, whatever. And so I've seen those two. And then the one morning I had, I had one coming through the, it was, the leaves were all still up. And I had one coming towards me. And then it was too early. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try rattling. <laughs> <laughs> and then he bugger, or whatever it was, buggered off. I don't know if it was a buck or no. I just heard it. And it's like, oh, great. I know that's not a squirrel. It didn't blow or anything, but it just took off. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, grief. So, uh, as far as the land goes, I tried it around a, a while this morning, you know, 240 acres, so there's a lot of land to see. So I went to the back water hole, and finally I saw tracks. So they were hitting that. So it's a, it's a quarter section, and then there's 80 in the back yet. So... They dug out the water hole back there, I don't know, this year, last year. I think it was this year. With the, with the dozer, they made it bigger. Yeah. And finally, there's there's actually quite a few tracks back there. And I'm, you know, to be honest, I've not, I've never spent much time back there as far as sitting goes. So I sat there a while and nothing came of it, obviously. I'm sitting here not cleaning, <laughs> not cleaning deer. Yeah. Uh... Went from there, went through the oaks behind the house where the barn used to be. I saw some more tracks back there. I know that that's produced some, that's kind of where the wolves used to like to hang out and the bears, but I'm a deer actually. 
but uh, I saw some tracks back there. And I found a good spot maybe to build a box blind next year. Yeah. I'd like to elevate one, but it might just be a ground one. I mean, if we even if we even get around to it, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it might be time to expand our horizons as far as my brother and I go. Yep. So I know he's been looking into. He got some permission on some property local. Okay. Through through his work, so I think he might be hanging out there this fall for the rest of the year coming up now. So I don't know. We'll see. So, do you think that because we we're both conservationalist, conservational minded people, we're also both kind of people that tend to take hunting pressure into consideration. Do you think that there's a potential that the land? is just right now pushed out of how many like it's been it's been cleared out per se of of the deer that are there of the big mature bucks let's say do you think that it's been like you've, you've had a good run over the last three years on that property do you think that maybe it's just you know time to give it a breather or is that not something you're seeing yet i don't i don't believe it is as far as i know could be wrong now, but as far as I know, so as far as this year goes, I don't think that there's anybody in that square mile that actually bow hunts. Okay. So, as far as hunting pressure on this year, I don't think so, but overall in the last few years, that could very well be. Because, I mean, we got the river, uh, I don't know, what is it, a quarter or three-eighths of a mile away from there. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of ponds and water holes close by, too. I got a pond on the neighbors 300 yards away from my stand there. Yeah. So, there's plenty of food and water available, but realistically, where I've seen lots of nice, I've seen quite a few nice deer there, on camera at least. Yeah. Lesser, you know, in the flesh, but since... I want to say 10 days into September, I have not had a nice buck picture on camera this hmm. year. And normally, normally there's uh, more action than that. So, yeah, it might be time to give it a breather, especially that corner of the land. That's what I mean. Yeah. Because like I said, you guys have had a really good run there the last few yeah. years. And, and I'm not, I don't want to make it sound like I'm telling you that it's over hunted or you're <sighs> crushing too hard. I just, it, that's always something that... And I think everybody takes or learns in their own capacity, right? Yeah. That, okay, you know what? If you look at one year as a layer, right? Yeah, this one year, yeah, there's deer there. But if you look at it over two, three, four, or five, ten years, you go, well, we've hunted and pulled good deer out here for ten years. Why are there no big deer now? Yeah, exactly. Right? They're, they're adaptable creatures. Mm-hmm. So that's the only reason I asked that. If, if that is something you're seeing, because again, I haven't walked that land. I haven't seen, you know, I don't, I don't even know the layout of it. So I, I haven't seen sign, right? I don't know what you're seeing out yeah, there. No, it, it's just, it's, I haven't seen the sign like I normally have this year, but it also has to do with, as far as I'm concerned, uh, and a fella with a lot more years than I in the field, he agreed that this year the cattle could have really taken a toll on that corner there. For sure. Absolutely. And so I did see one deer walk in the, so this is, I'm on the south side of the property here and on the north, halfway up, halfway up the quarter there to the north. I did see one walking the fence line through the, through the brush there. I didn't catch what it was. I just saw the tail end, but that was, so I guess that would be the third, fourth deer that I've, seen or heard but yeah this year but so i'm thinking where that sucker was walking that's kind of where i'd like to be there yeah but now to switch gears a little bit as far as uh areas to hunt last night i was on some public land with the bow correct okay i heard all about this story and i got out you know naturally a little bit later than i wanted yep because well that's how it works it's all too often how it works, and it's no other person's fault but my own. Yep. 
And good grief. Well, we the two of us, I mean, we this small little area, well, I wouldn't say small, it's probably let's say two square miles. So yeah, a forest that. fire come through there. Oh boy. A forest fire come through there about what am I now? I'm say eight years ago. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, eight, nine years ago. Yeah, that's when it was. Eight or nine. So this is a big burnout where they log out of there. So now we've got roughly 10-foot pines in there or evergreens, whatever. And there's poplars and that kind of thing. And So, and it's all hilly back there. That's kind of where it's like the start, the very, very start of the of what's progressing into the Canadian Shield. Yeah. It's where the prairies end. Right there is where the prairies end. Yeah. Which is kind of cool how Manitoba we have. The start of the shield, the end of the We prairie. do have some shield. We do have some great we got, shield. We have some great shield, the start of it, the we don't, end of the prairie. We don't exactly have sleeping giant Thunder Bay shield. No, no. With those cliffs and everything, which is super cool to that, see. Those are pretty neat. However, yeah. we do have some pretty wicked shield out here too. Yeah, we And do. not a far drive. I mean, from where we live, collectively, you can drive an hour in either way, and you're going to be touching... Flat, prairie... Complete different... Like Saskatchewan, pretty much. Yeah. Or rock hard shield. Well, even where we hunted, in the white shell there, like, we had 20 foot cliffs, 30 foot cliffs. That's rock hard shield out there, man. Like, that's... Yeah, absolutely. That's as wild as it gets, per se. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we forget about that or take it for granted that we have such a, a varying... Topography around here, it's, we do. It's crazy. Yeah. I think we're blessed. We're blessed beyond belief with that, and a lot of people don't think about that. So, anyways, so last night, yeah, I got in later than I wanted, but anyway, so I was sitting there. So I, so there's a bunch of rubs and scrapes down this one trail, and the trail is beaten down. Like they, they're active in there. Is that the same trail that we walked? Yeah, and we ended up on that quad trail on the way in, close to that. Where those birds were. So, um, shoot, remember where I saw that doe? Yeah. So, she ran kind of where we met up yeah. after I ventured. Yeah. Gallimat so then we, we walked back down that little cut. Yeah. And we got into that where those poplars and stuff were, maybe birches, I don't remember. Yeah. Where the, where the tree line actually closed in. Yeah. Yeah, where you said this would be a great spot to rifle hunt. Because you got that alleyway there. Yeah, and I said this is a little close for rifle hunting, but yeah, yeah, I know, I know where you're sitting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, just because, you, well, whatever, that's besides the point. Yeah, I, I know what some you're of saying. the shots there would be a little long for the stick and string. They would be, yeah, unless you're Cameron Haynes, and neither of us are. Yeah, no, not even close. <laughs> so, uh, so down there. So when we were there, we saw one rub and one scrape. In yep. there, yeah. Yep. So now there's two rubs in a scrape. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to sit right close to this rub and scrape that are side by side, two feet apart, a yep. foot apart. So I back my way, you know, into the evergreens and there's brush and everything. So for sitting on the ground, it got some pretty good cover there. It's yep. maybe a little bit noisy, but if you are careful, you can get away with it. Sure. I mean, I almost did. Yeah, almost. So. Sitting there, and I was grunting every, I don't know, intervals. I'm not, I don't remember the time intervals, but I would grunt, and I thought, well, I'm going to rattle today. So I was rattling, grunting, you know, sit there, wait, listen. It was raining. All of a sudden, it got super calm. No wind, no rain. It was beautiful, absolutely yep. beautiful. Well worth going out. Ideal conditions. Yep. You know what? So the rain picked up, and there was a little bit of wind, and just the slightest of breezes. And, you know, it's, the evening is carrying on and, you know, rattled grunt. And finally, you know, you know, your ears play tricks on you, especially when it's raining, you hear all kinds of things. Yeah. It's nothing. All of a sudden I heard footsteps. And 
When you hear that, that's not a squirrel. No. no. You can tell the difference. You Once can... you hear footsteps for the first time of the year, like, I... I always find it funny because I always, like, the first time sitting, I always hear squirrels, right? Yeah. And I'm always, like, yeah. super tuned into yeah. that. Yeah. And then you hear footsteps for the first time, like, oh, yeah, that's what a footstep sounds like. Okay, now, and then you, you yeah. just, you actually block out all the squirrel sounds. And the birds, the little the birds, birds that jump on the yeah. ground. Yeah. 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 And it's like, wow. And some, you know what, sometimes they do sound very similar. Oh, yeah. They absolutely do. And you got to, I mean, every sound is worth investigating because you never know. And sometimes you won't hear the guy at all or the deer at all. Yeah. So, I heard this one, and I knew. He he kind of tried to circle around me a little bit. Yeah. So he whatever he went to the to the east of me a little bit. And I was I had been crouched for probably ten minutes, and if you know me, you know that my knees aren't exactly what they should be for being twenty four. <laughs> you and me both. Bro. You can speak to that as well. Yeah. So. Eventually, I, my legs started to shake, so I had to just stand up. I had a hard time standing up. I just had to, you know, I had to stand up and stretch them, whatever. Yeah. So I stand up where I'm sitting, and, you know, I can kind of step out onto the trail and look both ways, you know, make sure there's nothing that I missed. And, yeah. You know, just do it slow and quiet, and there's plenty of cover. So, yeah, now I hear this sound of this deer walking. I know it's, I know there's something close. I know it's not a little critter. Yeah. Something hooked. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, it's like, okay. So I grunt a little bit more. Just the tiniest bit. You know, here and there, here and there. And slowly but surely, he makes his way. And all of a sudden, I look over. Because I thought that he was still, like, he was, he was coming from the south, straight north towards me. Yeah. But in the meantime, he had circled around. And I, I couldn't exactly tell where his footsteps were now, because the wind had picked up ever so slight. Yeah, so it was you know, and it was raining again, so it was kind of harder to hear. Yeah, everything's a little direction. Muffled. Yeah, so he had kind of gone to the east of me a little bit, and I look over, and there, there his head is. And then, of course, there's too many branches and stuff behind him, so I can only see antlers sticking up. And they looked a good height. Yeah, a good height. I'd say 18, 20 inches tall. That's that's a good height. That's a shooter. Yeah. And he's looking at me. You know, his head was tilted up, and he's looking over the trees. I'm like, oh, no. He saw me, and he's going to bolt. So I stand. I just stand stock still. Yeah. Like, heart, heart is beating out of my chest already, and I'm going through my checklist to calm down and get ready. It's yeah. almost game time. Here yeah. we go. Here we go. You know, time to buckle in here. Yeah, going for, go for a ride with Chase Elliott here. Yeah, dig, dig, dig. So, I, you know, he kind of looks away, puts his head down. Thank goodness. In in the meantime, I had my bowl in my hand already as I was yep. standing. So I, <clears throat> from where I was standing there, there was too much brush in the way I couldn't take a shot. So I kind of stepped out a bit and, and then hunkered down a little bit. You know, crouched down. I had good cover, and he steps forward a bit. He's still behind an evergreen, and and uh, and there's plenty of brush, and so I can just see bits and pieces of his body. I can just see still living, breathing proof that he's there. And he pulls pulls forward enough. I can I can see his tail flicking. You know, it's it's wet, so he's you know flicking his tail, whatever. No big deal. Yeah. And I'm just waiting. I'm like, you know, praying, like, okay, thinking. Okay, five seconds, ten seconds. He's gonna, he's gonna step out, and I gotta be ready because he's gonna be. He knows there's something going on here. Yeah, he's not a dummy. You know, flicking his tail, you can see that white flash, and the guy never steps out. Just didn't have it in him. But from like, you know, I'm sure there'd be some dum dums that would take a shot with a gun. Yeah, in my opinion, I would not have shot, I would have not have poked with a gun because I could not see where his vitals were. I could not. Yeah, I could not have guaranteed a good kill. Yeah. So he never stepped forward out of that thicket there. He turned around and slowly meandered back in. You know, he jumped a few yards, did a little. <laughs> yeah. So that let you know that uh, he knows you're there. Yeah, and then he walked away. I could hear him walk away. It's like, Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm thinking, 
do I stay here or do I jump on the trail and try to head him off somewhere? I thought, well, it's getting close to dark. I'm just going to hang out here. Well, nothing ever came of it, so. So that's been the closest encounter you've had this year. Yeah. Absolutely. He was he was five feet away from a slick trick. Catching he, him. Piercing his body. Catching catch him all oh. in the room. 30 yards, man. 30 yards. That was so fun, but so frustrating. You know, it, that kind of seems to be the... the So glad I was out there, though. Oh, my oh, yeah, God. So, you saw that video. I was just pumped. Oh, that's the thing. Like, you know, I think... Like, from the little bit we've hunted together and then hunting on our own, put it that way, we were both, I think we were both getting a hair frustrated with the way the season was going. Oh, I get frustrated all too easy and I am very ashamed of that, but that is... Well, so am I. I think I, I, I'm the same way. No, I'm ashamed of you for doing that. Um, well, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> but I think... You start seeing deer, and it changes your whole perspective. You know, I, I was talking today, and I said to you, you know, I think I've gotten too focused on the farm buck. Yeah. I, I've put too much effort into that deer. And he's in your mind all the time. Yeah, and, and he, now, now I'm hinging my entire season on... Farm buck. On the farm buck, and, and I know... Who is one of the most elusive bucks I've ever heard of. Yeah. Move over, Holyfield. Yeah. Ken got a dandy of a buck. He did. Beautiful. But anyway, so yeah, what's your word to sum up your your season this year so well, far? Should I, I, maybe I'll talk a bit about my goose season. Sure, yeah, because we haven't done an update on that at all. Well, speaking of frustration, I'm going to be honest, a lot of guys have been doing very well and a lot of guys have been doing very poor. I'm on the very poor side this year. I've been getting all too frustrated. We It's been a terrible time to hide this year the weather has been shoddy everything's been a mud pit yep and there's tons of birds here and it's just we've had a hard time hiding and nobody nothing wants to commit and we change our spreads we move around we have good camel and we just can't it's been tough well i'm just gonna say it's been tough and frustrating love every minute of it but it makes it all too easy to focus on deer hunting it does. <laughs> yeah. But don't get me wrong. I absolutely love waterfowl. I haven't been out for ducks as much as I'd hoped. Okay. Been a little tied up with other things, but... Uh, That's how it happens. Yeah. So... Only so many irons you can have in the fire at one time. I'm really, really hoping I can maybe poke something in the Sandylands coming up soon so I can get out a few more times before the big freeze. For waterfowl. For waterfowl, yeah. So you're willing to now take something in the sandy lands and leave Georgie for another year? Yeah. Because when we, like, we talked when we were going out to the White Shell. Now, granted, that was early A September. A month ago? It was early September. Yeah. When we went out. I think it was September 20th or 22nd. So about a month ago. Yeah, about a month just ago. Just over, yeah. And you had been I was very on set on on Georgie. You yeah. you weren't willing to pull the trigger on. It would have to be a real it special been, buck yeah. for you to pull the trigger on it that early in the year. I haven't seen Georgie in a month and a half. So he's. I have no proof. Yeah, no he, proof that he's still breathing. Well, I would assume he is. He's probably just moved on. Really? <laughs> My uncle, like he's a truck driver, so he's not around much. But yeah. When he's home, he always tells me stories of deer on the yard when he's out working on the semi and everything. They come onto the yard, there's acorns and stuff. So really, I should probably just be sitting on a lawn chair in the yard. <laughs> Drinking a beer. Or having a coffee or whatever, yeah. That's what I should be doing on the, on the land. But, I, you know, yesterday I realized, man, I've shot deer with muzzleloader and bow on the land. I would like to get a public land bug with a bow. Yep. I mean, come rifle season, I'm going to take the rifle out, but I think right now, during muzzle, I think I'm going to stick with the bow in Sandy Lands in the public. I'm going to stick with the bow all year round. Yeah? Yeah, I won't break the rifle out. Well, I also have a section of land that I have hard to touch this year. Yeah, that I've true. been saving for a rifle. Yeah, hopefully that will pan out. Hopefully. Worst I, case, Ontario, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I guess my season... Yeah, let's hear about this. ...has been equally as frustrating. It's a real kick in the knackers, bro. Yeah, like, I, I hunted... I've hunted 20, 20 days. Okay. To, or 20 times I've been out in the field. And... Now, I was sick for a week. And I mean, like... On my deathbed, sick. Like, I couldn't even... I could hardly function. Yeah. So I couldn't go out then, and then I've just been busy with work the last week. But... So, yeah, we, so we hunted the white shell. That didn't obviously pan out. We did some time in Sandy Lines together. We did some time in Sandy Lines together. I haven't been back there yet. You're missing out. Well, I've been busy. Yeah. I know. I've hunted Tyndall, Manitoba, on a one-day agreement with a guy I did some work for. He said, I can hunt the land for one day. So I hunted that day and I mean, I'm still sitting here with little deer in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I forgot you went to Tyndall. Yeah. I don't exactly have the best memory as it is. That's okay. So then uh, I kind of switched focus into my farm buck chase over the last three weeks. Yeah, you did. And I've been hunting that deer consistently in the evenings and weekends and hunting him very, very hard. And he has gone radio silent. There is... Even the Navajo coat toggers can't pick him up, eh? Absolutely not. There's hide, there's hide nor hair of him. All the guys that I know that have trail cams out, they haven't seen him. Basically, I'm the last person that's seen him alive, which would have been on that cornfield. Yeah. Um, you, you think something got to him? No, no. I think he's just smart. There's a reason he's still alive. There's he's a reason that, alive, that deer is... firm time. Got as old as he did, or has. Um, I think he is breeding at night and sleeping all day. That's what I think. Do you think he's breeding already? I think so. Okay. Because I pulled apart a doe yesterday. Right. A roadkill. A roadkill doe. For some analysis. Yep. Conservation. And uh, she was in the early stages of heat. Of getting, getting tuned up. Ready. Yeah. So. Active. I would say he's probably breeding at night. I'm thinking he's going to breed very, very early in the year and then just tuck away in a bush. Okay. However, I did hunt a new piece of land around the farm where I know that farm buck has been spotted. Um, and I put a stalk on a couple of those just to see if I could. And I got within 20 yards before they moved on. They didn't see me. She just walked off. It was, it was a doe and a fawn. She walked off. She just was kind of done with the area and was feeding her way down yeah. down to a water hole. But put a good stuff on. Doing out. deer things. Yeah, just doing deer things. Okay. Right. So that was probably the excitement. That got me really fired up again. Yeah, I believe it. was like, hey, I just put a stalk on some deer. I'm in an area where there's I'm getting close to does. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm where I need to be. Yeah. So, um, I mean, in a nutshell, the season's been one of patience, perseverance, character, hope, time, and space. Time and space! Um, but these are the years where you learn the most. You learn the most about what you're doing in the field and what to change. And if, if you have the wherewithal to put it in your head that you need, there's something that needs to get changed up and you can adapt throughout the year. These are the years that you you learn the most. Absolutely, I think I think last year we were both very very blessed to take animals as early as we did. I mean, my memory on Facebook just came up. Your one day, one hunting day of the year, right? My thirty minutes in the stand of the year, and ouch, uh, had one down. That's nice. So I think, and I was tagged out Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah, so we were both done early in the year. So I think um, I think last year we were both very blessed to take animals. I think this year I, I, I go, going into it, I knew I was going to have to work for it. I knew that the 
dear gods were not going to smile down on me for another 30 minute sit this year. I knew that that would be, uh, I'd have to work for it. Not on the table. No. So as for hunting season, I mean, what's your plan moving forward now? Going about the rest of muzzle just opening on Monday. Yeah, we got so just, we got over, six, just over two weeks left of muzzle, and in three weeks of rifle. So we got, yeah, just so about just just about six weeks. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna weeks. shoot that buck that I saw yesterday. That's, that's my plan. That's your plan. So now, are you gonna shift focus solely to Sandy Lands? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's my plan right now. So. I mean, I don't want to pressure it too much. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to sit in that same spot every time. I think I'm going to walk around a bit. But yeah, oh, one thing I forgot to mention when I was walking in yesterday. So I, oh, I got startled real bad. Some fella must have been sighting in his muzzle loader like close by. Wow, wow, like jump hairs up on the back of the neck and it's like, holy cow, what is going on here, man? Like, good grief. I know that guys hunt down the cut line there, but it's like, come on, I want to hunt today. And I kept walking. Bouch! Keep walking. Bouch! You know, as I, as I keep walking, it, get, it gets quieter and quieter. I'm getting away from him, but so he bouched probably, I don't know, 12, 15 times. <laughs> wow. And I'm thinking, well... I mean, that's going to drive some deer my way. And yeah, that'll push perhaps, it. sure enough, that's me. I mean, he had stopped bouncing for probably a good hour before I saw this buck. Yeah, he's probably, that buck was probably just getting comfortable again. Yeah. You know, the hair on the back of his neck was finally coming down and he was mm-hmm. letting his guard down. And or maybe, or maybe he was at a safe distance where it didn't bother him to start with. Could Who be. knows? I mean, we are in that same area. Maybe it was that same buck I jumped over Could there. Be. Could be. Because that, that would make sense with how tall I saw that buck. Like I, he was fairly to his about 18 inches. Did he look like he was, did he look like he was sneering at you? Like he was like, ha, you think you can shoot me? No, he, uh, the, the look I got was, oh shit! I better run! And he stepped behind a thicket. No, this guy was like, ha! Oh no, this, I never had ha. that. This deer was, oh shit, there's something right on top of me. But, um, so you're going to focus on the buck that, that you saw in Sanding Lands. I think or so. an antlered animal in Sanding Lands. Yeah. Public land bull kill this year. I mean, if, if I get intel that there's big bucks running around the land, I'll pop in for sure. Oh, sure, yeah. But if I don't, I mean, Sanding Lands is a closer drive. Yeah. Well, the weather next week is looking dandy. Is it? One degree all weekend. Ooh. And overcast. Okay. And as far as I can tell, those are the best hunting days. Hey. Not bad, not bad. I got a few other spots in Sandy Lands I wouldn't mind checking out. I mean, if things get super slow. Yeah. I did pull a camera from the land I want to put up where I was yesterday. Okay. Put it on that rub and scrape there and see what comes by. Yeah, maybe that buck stops by and you can get an actual look at him. And maybe he's actually like a two by two four corn and yeah, just that just tall piddly little fella. Uh, but hey, good genetics. Yeah. Let him grow. Yeah, you have a holy field cut on your hands here. <laughs> Probably not out there though. <laughs> well, just, that I mean, the p- bad part about it is that that area, not specifically, but Sandy Lands as a whole, does have a lot of pressure come Orange Army time. Yep. However, in that little piece, from what I've seen over the years, it's usually not too busy. Yeah. Which is good. But the other thing than, is... Other than Murray muzzleloader out slouching <laughs> last night. <laughs> Get her dialed in. <laughs> good grief. Go do it somewhere else. Um, oh, well. That being said, there's always honey holes, little hidey holes where the big guys will stay and year after year grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And... You get Larry the Walker walking the tree line, and you're a few hundred yards away. Well, I'll push him. The the deer typically don't like to be associated with two legged predators Not carrying usually. a straight line on their shoulder. Not usually. That'll cause them to move elsewhere. Correct. Perhaps into my kitchen, into your freezer, and then proceed very quickly into your belly. It was a it was a good sound. 
It was a good sound to have back in the in the old kitchen. So, yeah, absolutely. That sizzle was greatly missed. Sizzle, sizzle. Um, and then we also have that second tag. Yeah, that needs to be an atlas. So that's where I'm headed next weekend to see if I can't gather a little bouch. Gather a little. Uh, it'll be a blouch, but it'll be a twang. It'll be a twang, and then a thud. Or a thwack. And then an Instagram video. If it's brown, it's down. End. End. Send. That's it. Send. <laughs> Report. Oh, speaking of archery. Okay. I did a little something silly yesterday. Uh-oh. So last weekend, when I was in the stand, I, well, I was climbing down and I wanted to keep my arrow knocked. I was too lazy. Kids, don't be lazy. Do your due diligence. So I was quickly dialing in my bow again like yesterday before I left. Because why? Because it, I dropped and I was fearing that it was off. Now. Yeah. And yeah. it was off. So good yeah. thing I did that. And let's just say I lost an arrow and I, cause I, I shoot my target against the shed at home and well, there's a slick trick in the shed right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that arrow is pooched. Oh yeah. She goes. She hooped. I think I'm going to leave it there. As a reminder. That's a nice entrance, though. Yeah, it is. Perfect, nice and clean. Yeah. My, my so range would have been about that big, but... <laughs> this is some... <laughs> I'm bugging you. This is some... Well... How many uh, knives does that rage have? Dose. Okay, well... But a big-ass cutting diameter. Whatever the case is... These slick tricks really do good against hardwood. <laughs> Your slick trick does well against deer as well. I yes, saw the damage. It did did a fair amount. Yeah, even with that, that arrow broke off, and that broadhead stayed in there on the far leg and just kept cutting and cutting and yep. cutting and cutting until it fell over. As it moves. That's kind of, you know, a pass-through is nice, but hey, if it stays in there. Yeah, that could be money as well. It's still doing damage. Every step he takes, every time he moves that shoulder, well... That's an ouch. There's four blades in there going, ouch, ouch! What is that strange feeling in my shoulder? I do not like that. Why is am I short of breath? Oh, no. I'm just going to lay down here for a while. <laughs> Rest my weary eyes. <sighs> dirt nap. Dirt snap. So Dirt snack. Dirt snack. I would have dirt. I have a dirt snack. I have dirt snacks in the in the fridge right now, drying yeah, out. Um, yeah, for me, I guess it's head out to White Shell. Hopefully, pull the trigger on a doe and. Spend. You mean release the release? Yeah, well, you pull the trigger. Well, well the yeah. release has a trigger, so I'm still pulling the trigger. <laughs> yeah, I'll blow out a doe and then. Um, well, yeah. You know. Hopefully, blow to do. Hopefully, yeah. That's why I said. I said hopefully. Yeah. That's the plan, anyway, is to to hunt a doe there, and then uh, who knows? Maybe I'll stumble upon an absolute booner out there too. The biggest buck you ever laid eyes on. Hopefully, put that, put that firing buck to shame. Hopefully, but you know what? You never know. It uh, you take it as it goes. Take it as it comes. Just roll with it. Yeah. Speaking of rolling with it. Let's take a little moment here to talk about a little something else we both enjoy. Okay. <sighs> DI9. The man. The myth. The legend. The youngster. Mr. Chase Elliott. <laughs> back to back. Back to back to back? Could he? He could. Your, your main man has pull, though. Well, I mean, that's a given. Rowdy. It's only, <laughs> Rowdy. The second, only second time he's gotten pulled at Martinsville. Okay. That guy's had a heck of a year, though. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting year for NASCAR. Like, it's been really competitive, which is really cool. But him and Harvick, though, just above everybody else. For, like, it's kind of weird. It's like in the NHL, sometimes you have a team in the East, a team in the West that are, like, miles ahead. 55 wins each. Like, what? Yeah. Like, almost 120 points. Like, and then, look at Vegas last year. Yeah, exactly. They were the Cinderella. Or Washington almost every year, it seems. Yeah. In the last, and then the playoffs, they usually uh, suck. 
But hey, this that changed won. last year. Changed last year, they won. Hey, maybe they'll do it again. Who knows? Think they can repeat? I mean, I haven't watched the Washington game this year, but the last Washington game I watched, I was there. I was that was live. <sighs> I was with you. That's right. That was a good game. That was that was an OT winner for Winnipeg. Yeah, they tied it in the last few seconds. We yeah. were getting ready to leave. Yeah. Like, oh no, we're gonna stay. So I guess we'll save. I mean, anything's possible, but as of now, I mean, the joke used to be that if Crosby comes over to Ovechkin's house for a drink, he has no cups, but now he does. Now he's got one, at least. (laughs) Exactly. So he can have a drink with Crosby. Yeah. Well, should we take a break for our sponsors? Yeah, I think we should. All right, you jagaloons. We sent out a little shout out to our sponsors last podcast. And our boys at Half a Thing of Honey were mighty thrilled. Mighty thrilled. To have your guys' support. In turn, you guys have helped us out to do what you guys love. Listen to hashtag Mugs, Mugs Battering. So, they want to put another offer to you. For a one time payment of $700, they're going to throw in. A 10 pound barrel of honey. 10 with pounds! With locally two. grown, locally grown apiarists. With two water mules. Two! Oh my goodness! With, here's the kicker, water in them already. Folks, you'd be The honest. world's finest water. Finest. Sourced from Marchand. W- infused with honey. Oh my goodness. Through a. You guys. Very. You guys. Very. Classified recipe, recipe, and what's the word I'm looking for? Nutrients? No, the like the process. Oh yeah, very classified process. So here's what I want you to do: I want you to head on over to halfthinghoney.com backslash mugs battering seventy mugs battering seventy, and they're gonna give you fifteen percent off this purchase. Regular fifteen hundred dollars for seven hundred. Ten pounds of honey. Think of how many sandwiches you can make. Probably four. Probably four sandwiches. Ten. Probably in the four, four, four sandwiches in the bush. At least. Off ten pounds. Off ten, at least. That is a steal, folks. What are you waiting for? I am going to pull that up right now. And, uh... Oh, what was it? Mugs battering. Bantering 70. Does it work? Woo! You just, congratulations, you just own 10 pounds of honey. Okay. Holy cow. Now back I'm to excited. your regularly scheduled program. Okay, so and we're back. Chase Elliott. Martinsville. Martinsville, the paperclip. He's had a little bad luck there with a certain 11 car. The purple, the FedEx. Of Denny Hamlin. Uh, Denny Hamlin. So, who do you think is going to punch your ticket? Round of eight. Obviously, Rowdy, you, you, you're going to go with Rowdy. Well, Chase has some momentum. He's confident right now. I mean, he's, the, he's getting the, good cars. The kid can drive. He's all over that loud pedal. <laughs> he's got a good crew, good Great chief. Crew. Alan Gustafson. Yeah. Well,. Considering Rowdy has the pole. Yeah. <sighs> I'm torn. It's going to be it's going to be him and Chase. I think Danny, I don't think Danny's going to be a factor tomorrow. Okay. It's going to be Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch fighting for the lead for the finish. Okay. I don't know what I'm guessing Kyle's gonna have some trouble. He's gonna lose a wheel or something silly. I don't know. He's gonna he's gonna go last back to first. And Drive it up from the rear. He can do it. He, he does. Can. He's done it time and again. He's he won can. races like that. He started in the reminds back. me of old seven time. Jimmy, the forty eight car, the main man, driving it from last to first. Yeah, I'm gonna go way out of left field on today with with this pick for a weekend. Our 
Southern boy, Clint Boyer. Ooh, Clint Boyer. I think he's uh, he's due for one. Boy. I think he's going for the clock. Okay. I think he's going to get it. Okay. You got Clint, and I'm going to... St- I mean, obviously, I'm still rooting for Chase. Oh, that, that'll we, never we, win. we both are, yeah. But I think it's Clint's, Clint's day to get it done. Okay. I'm going to pick... Uh, oh, this is, this is the toughest decision I've made all week. No. I'm going to go with Kyle Busch. All right. The 18 car. Rowdy, the candy man. But, 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 Chase Elliott, in my opinion, is going to be right there, so it's a toss-up. Yeah, it can go either way. I'm pulling for you both, fellas. Um, we need to make a shout-out. All right, let's hear it. Uh, we got some insight from a certain uh, fella okay. that supports our mission. We support his. Jeff Martin Bohunts. Formerly Manitoba Bow Hunting or Manitoba Bow Hunts, I think it was. Okay. It's Jeff Martin Bow Hunts now. All right. And he had some uh, <clears throat> insight on an early rut, probably about 20 days ago. And we were talking about how it would have been good to use estrus smell and yep. start rattling. Just nothing crazy. And uh, we were talking about the early rut and. He agreed that it, there's definitely an early rut. Yep. And etc. So <clears throat> here's your shout out. Go follow him at Jeff dot Martin with an I dot Bohunts. Locally grown. Locally grown Manitoba. Hey, thanks for the insight. Thanks for the input. Also, do got to make a shout out to our boy Wired Hunt. Mark Canyon, Mark Canyon. through Canyon. with a couple answers on some questions I had. Really? Yeah, I sent you the picture. Oh, that's right. You I did. just asked him asked him about uh, some ground hunting techniques. Oh, let's hear about him. And uh, he just said, "Listen to his podcast." <laughs> of course he did. And I'm like, "Hey, I've I, I listen to your I podcast all the time." So did I. So thanks to Mark Canyon for that. I appreciate that you're uh, willing to take the time for your. Smaller fans. Just a couple fellas from the northern the northern to, lands. And I did I did extend an, an offer. If he's ever looking to really get a challenge in, come hunt public land man told the way tales. <laughs> Especially in November when you got the, the orange army. army. Hashtag Public Land Manitoba is hard to hunt. Very hard. But it'd be kind of cool to have them up here. Hashtag, what would we call it? Flatland Pursuit Guiding. A little mix there. You see what I did there? I, I, I see you, that. You got it? Yeah. Flatland Wait. Pursuit Guiding. Okay, yeah. yeah. We've got him on a hunt. In where it's not actually flat. Yeah. It's mountainous. Not mountainous, rocky. It's like mountainous for the flatlands? Yeah, it's it's pretty, it's as mountainous it's like as we have out here. Other than when you went to the Yukon, and that's the close to mountains. Though, when I, yeah. I mean, we've both been in Alberta. Yeah. Uh, and well, I saw mountains in California and stuff, but otherwise, it's like mountainous for us. Yeah, it's pretty wicked. Thirty foot drop, you're like, whoa! Whoa! Well, what is this? This is a game changer. Well, I have to go home now because yeah. I can't go down there. Yeah, like, uh, well, I didn't bring I didn't bring my repelling gear <laughs> today, and well. That way down is like a hundred extra yards that way, so I'm just not going to go there. No, because, I mean, although every we, time we don't do that around here, but actually we did do that. We we do. We do were that. crossing creeks. I was crossing creeks. Well, you were just about falling off sheer faces. <laughs> Fun times in the white shell. Yeah, yeah. Good grief. I guess it's. Uh, I'd reckon it's getting close to time of heading back out there. See yeah. if we can't fill that tag. I would like to. I'd love to. I'll never say no to extra meat in the freezer. I'm getting hungry. Getting real hungry these days. No no slight against beef. Not at all. No slight against chicken. In fact, I would like to uh, own some beef of my own one day or... As well I. Some kind of large domestic creature. Domestic hooved creature. However, I do prefer the uh, protein that comes from the wild variety. I would agree. 
So judging by the back straps, I have aging in my fridge. A donation from a dear friend. From a very close friend. How about that? She was so worried about that thing going to waste. I says, "Hey, don't worry. I'll help you out. I'll take them straps off there. Take them straps." Wish I could have saved the tenderloins, but there was no way that was happening. Oh, well, away she goes. Took everything I could. Yep. This is the one of the few times I'll agree and call them straps. Just because your picture or video is that good. That you said, was it a video? I think it was, no, I think it was a picture. I think a picture after Well, it was mind. good, so it was like, it was oh, okay, I'll call them straps for once. <sighs> them loins! They are their loins. They're good loins. Taste well, your mean, back straps. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I learned how to call cuts by their domestic. By what names. they actually are? Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to roll with that. It's like I don't say you don't ever fillet fish. It's fillet. You fillet fish. Yeah. That's wrong, too. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. It's fish. You hey, eat it. ice fishing season's coming you up, put, buddy. You put that breading on there and you eat them. Tasty. And then you go about your life. However, Ron Swanson does say that fish is like a vegetable. <laughs> it's the vegetable of meats, I believe is the exact quote. <laughs> Parks and Rec. You know, I'd like to watch that show in its entirety. It's funny. It's funny. It is funny. I've seen a few episodes here and there. Yeah. I wish it was on Netflix. I wish it was. I would watch it. Hey, Netflix. Get after it. I want to watch that. Tune in. I'm, I'm overpaying for a service that I don't really use. Yeah, that... They, other, other than watching Ranella. And you have to buy the most expensive package if you want HD. I hate that. Yeah. If you want HD, yeah, you got to buy the four-person one. Then you feel obligated to give it out to four people. I don't give it up for people. I have it just for myself. Well, but I've been, I've been lucky enough that for years I've been sharing with a buddy of mine. Or he... I had it and then he leached on. <laughs> but he said, so he's the leech. He's the leech. But... When I remind him, he pays me about a half a year late. Yeah. Or longer, so it's all I mean, good. Yeah, it balances out in life. It just comes out of my account automatically, so it's like, well... You almost forget about it. There goes fourteen ninety nine in my life Yeah, for something I barely use. There's... But it's there's HD. Half, yeah, it's HD. <laughs> Except for when it buffers. Frickin' buffering. Yeah. Oh, well. It is what it is. You get your hockey season started. Today. Today's the first one? Yeah. Actually, they're playing right now. I thought you were going there. No, I gotta play after they're done. Oh, what are you talking about? Wait, what, what did I'm you talking say? about your beer league. I thought you said junior hockey. No, was I said your hockey. Season oh, started. it started a while ago. I just haven't played lately. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Been nursing some. I don't know. Some some injuries. You've been on the IR. Yeah. The day to day. The day to day and the well, I don't really feel like playing this week. <laughs> yeah, can't make it. <laughs> Other things have came up. Yeah, like watching Habib. And Connor, or that was a good fight. The old hips and back being like, yeah, not today. Have we talked about that fight at all? Yeah, I think we did last podcast. Did we not? No, we didn't. I don't think so. I think that was before. So late to the party. Little quick brief here. Uh, Connor got beat. He got in his charged. I would say starched. He, he got, got he got, got on the third round. He got throttled. It wasn't a complete starching, but he, it was. He got throttled. He's the first guy to ever beat Khabib in a round, though. Yeah. Cause for concern as far as Khabib goes? No. Nope. 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 Just as high as highest level of competition he's faced, and he handled it well. He handled it like a champion. All that hype and all that smack talk. Whew. Aside from the fiasco afterwards, he did a bang. Yeah, yeah the, the fight was really good. It was a, they, you know what? They both executed well. I think Connor was very hesitant to throw because he knew that if he was going to throw and miss, then Connor or then uh, Habib was going to take, take him down. down. But Which he did. He did. Yep, yeah. and beat the piss out of him on on the ground. Yep. But that was 
to be expected. That was, yeah. So, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, where Khabib goes from here now. Yeah. Hopefully that stuff gets sorted out. Yeah, I don't think he'll be in the UFC again. I think he will be. I don't think so. I think there's more money to fight Bellator. We'll see. I think he's going to move over. There's also that Asian one uh, called One FC. Yep. But Fitty, Fitty sent, mm-hmm. did make Habib an offer. Two million to come fight in Bellator. To come fight in Bellator. Cash. Yep. And Fitty would take care of the contract with the UFC. Mm. I thought he was going bankrupt. I don't know anything about 50 Cent, but I thought I'd seen some headline he was going bankrupt, but clearly... Not if he owns Bellator. That's true. I mean, he's got... He must have some revenue. He's got blessed. Mike Chandler. Yeah. Iron Mike. Iron Mike. Not Tyson. No. That's irrelevant. Irrelevant. Great boxer back in the day, though. Yeah. Tell you to pay the dude's ear off. That's oh, just a oh I wish he goes. That's a little weird. You know, just part of part of the game, right? Well, not usually, no. No, but you know, is what it is. Is what it is. But uh, uh, Mike Chandler's fighting next month, I think. Yep, he's in camp. Yeah, getting lean, looking trimmed already. Yeah, well, he cuts. I'm excited, about, I'm excited cuts for thirty pounds for Rockhold Weidman too. No, that's not happening. No. Rockhold's injured. Again. Weidman's fighting Jacare. Oh. That'd be a good one. I though. missed that. Yeah, it was just this week. Oh. Of course Rockhold's hurt. I like Weidman. I, I like him too. I'm a fan. Yeah. I think... Uh, I think the winner of that fight gets the next shot after Gaslam and uh, the uh, Kiwi. Uh, his name escapes me. The Kiwi. The champ. He's a Kiwi. Oh, um, oh, come on. Didn't he just fight, uh... UL. UL. <clears throat> UL, fight. yeah. Uh, what's the guy's... Whitaker. Whitaker. Robert, Robert Whitaker. Whitaker. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a Kiwi. No, he's not. He's from New Zealand. Yeah, it's a Kiwi. No, Australian's a Kiwi. No. Yes, it is. No. Absolutely. No. I'm almost certain on this one. No, no. I am certain. You're almost certain. An Australian is an Aussie. <clears throat> oh, yes, you're right. And we'll leave it at that. You're right. But anyways. So... You're going public land tomorrow. Public land tomorrow. And if I see something worth shooting... You're going to take a shot. I'm going to... I mean, if everything lines up, yeah, I'm... I'll, well, be, I'll be swinging the arrow. Yeah. Okay. I'm fully prepared to... drag animals tomorrow. The old buck drag or the yeah. old doe drag? Uh, no. Buck drag? It would have... At this point of the year, I'm still... Buck dragging. Still buck dragging. I wouldn't pull a doe. I, I probably won't, wouldn't arrow a doe unless it's white shell for second tag... Or getting down to the last three weeks of rifle. That's when I'll really start yeah. considering. Like in the next that's, two weeks, I'll basically kind of shift my too. focus. Yes. Just because November is typically, end of November to beginning of December is typically a very busy time for me already. Yeah, with Christmas coming up and everything I got, it just, I, I end up not making it into the bush as much as I'd like. Yeah, and the days are so short. Exactly. Especially come... Uh, well, even now, like, our sunset's 6.15. Yeah. And the sun rises... 7.45? No, it was after 8. Was it? Shooting time is, like, 7-something, but... Let's check. Sunrise, I believe, was 8.10. 8. 8.08, okay. 8.08, sunset, 6.10. So... So, shooting light would be 6.40, or 7.40. Yeah. So... Yeah. Short days. And you? Big hopes. Heading out tomorrow? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure when, but uh, I will be out tomorrow. I mean, Whether it's morning or evening? Hopefully nothing changes that. I mean, yeah. whatever. But the plan is to go out. We'll say that. And hopefully this podcast is published t- today yet. Yeah. T- 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 today, so Julia. Hopefully yeah. next podcast, we've got some... Meat in the freezer. Hashtag meat it's stories. Meat in the freezer. Hashtag meat stories for you. More hunting stories. 
Yeah. I've gotten good reviews on our white shell hunt. Good. On the storytelling aspect of it. Any names to draw? Nope, not as of officially. Okay. But okay. good reviews. Good. So we need more stories like that. Uh, all you uh, freeloaders or leeches or whatever, yep. respectfully. Yeah, of course. If you have anything that you want to hear us talk about, banter about. Please. Any questions you have, questions on the way we see things, on opinions, let us know. And we'll do our best to respond in depth. ASAP. Yeah. ASAP as soon as possible. Michael Scott. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky. Michael Scott. Michael Scott. (laughs) Michael Klump. (laughs) President Mike. (laughs) Michael Scarn. (laughs) Threat level midnight. What was was the uh, Greek one? Oh, yeah. Um... Was it Mikolo? No, is Mi- Mykonos? It could be. Let's do a quick Google search here. Uh, Can't remember. I know it was something that that was with uh, what's her name that he gets married to. Oh right. When he's impressing Holly. Her. Holly. No Jim and Pound. No. Uh. <laughs> Mykonos! Mykonos! Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Mykonos! Oh, yeah, with the collar out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there, he was the... No, no, that was at the... Uh, when Andy Bernard had that seminar. So he was the plant. He was Mykonos the plant. Oh, that's in right. In the seminar, yeah. <coughs> that's right. Oh! You're right, though. Later on in the episode, he uses his character to try and kiss Holly. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. I know my office. Yeah. Um, any shower thoughts? We're getting close to that time. Um, <sighs> I'm just really hoping that uh, the tags get filled. Get notched. Get notched. Get strapped onto the creature. Um, I'll be honest, I'm getting really hungry. Thinning out on the on the wild game side of things. Yeah, you have a lo- you don't have a whole lot of goose in the freezer, do you? No, not not very much. Not right now. No. Um, just really hoping that the uh, public land deal will work out. It'd be a cool story. It'd be something not a lot of people have done. Archery. Yeah. Especially getting later on in the year, and most guys are like, "Well, just take your gun out, man." I'm like, "Yeah, but." I'd say bring both. It never hurts to bring both. Right? Game time decision. Options. Yeah. Options are always good. You can always leave one in the truck. Exactly. You can always carry both. Is that legal? I think you can carry both. Absolutely. Something to look into. Or you could take one. I could take the other. Yeah. I mean, our, our bows are both, I think, identically set up. Minus a cam. Uh, our draw length will be the same. Very close, yeah. You'll be at 30? No. 28? 28, I think. 28? Okay. Well, I actually I'd honestly can't longer, remember. I'd have a longer draw. I think it's 28. I'm, I've maxed mine out. I actually need to get a longer draw. I got long, lanky arms. You know, speaking of bows, I was thinking yesterday, maybe it's time to buy a new bow. I've been... This will probably be my last hunting season with one. With this one. Okay. I'll probably upgrade for next year. I've had this one now for five years. Yeah. The reason I almost six. The only reason I want to switch is because this bow is a very good starter bow, and it can go to seven pounds and seventy. And when I'm pulling seventy, I'm actually twisting my limbs. And when I sent it in to have my limbs replaced, um, they the diamond rep told me it, it can pull seventy. It's not made to pull seventy. Mm. Whereas. Mine does not have such a vast adjustment. Yeah. And it's at 70, and there is no twist. Yeah. Yeah, mine, mine twists so. a little bit. And, I mean, mine's a single cam, and... I, I've been it, looking into it, Elite. Okay. Or Prime. Yeah. Prime makes a really good bow. Matthews, the Triax. Yeah. I'm. That's a bow that really intrigues me. I am... I think I'm set on either an APA or a Bowtech. Yeah. APA, fastest bow on the market. Yeah. But fast isn't always the best. I don't like a fast shooting bow. An extremely fast shooting bow, I should say. 
I've shot an EPA and I liked it. It was a good bull, but it was loud. But it is Canadian made. It is. And we are Canadian. We are. However, that does not influence my bias. Okay. I also do really like PSC and Hoyt. Yeah. I mean, out of all the big brands, like, no bow is bad, really. No, there isn't. Each, each bow has a setup for each hunter. You can kill something with pretty much any bow that can pull. You can a kill something with a blowgun. Yeah. You can kill something with a recurve. They did it for years. Before Literally that. years. <laughs> years and years and years. That, that would be something to venture into one day. Some trad arch. Yeah. One day. Yeah, no, I think uh, I'm definitely looking into the the triax. Okay. It's a fast bull. It's you know, quiet. Speaking of Matthews, light. I used to have such a vendetta that I wanted to buy Matthews so bad. Yeah. And then that kind of fizzled out, and I just stuck with my diamond. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, obviously, I've been exposed to Hoyt a lot in the yep. last few years. However... They're, they they look super cool and they they the technology looks good and and like I I have no slight I have nothing against Hoyt yeah I just I don't know I I, I don't want to I don't I don't feel the need to follow somebody just based on their gear that they have yeah I want to make my own decisions and and really I mean if I'm gonna shoot a Bowtech a Hoyt an APA and a PSE or something. May the best man win. Yeah, the best. I'm the same the, way. If if I have a budget, I'm going on. May the may the best bow win or that or that, on that budget. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. See, I've shot I've shot a lot of Hoyt before. Um. So I know how they shoot. I mean, that was an older Hoyt. Granted, <coughs> not the RX one. It was not the RX one Turbo. Keep, which keep hammering, keep hammering edition, which. Granted, you know what? I would love to get my hands on, a, on one of those and shoot it. I might head down to Heartland yeah. just so I can shoot that bow and see what all the fuss is about. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I got a buddy that has a brand new Matthews Triax. He loves that bow. He just, he actually owned an RX-1. Okay. Traded in the RX-1 on his Triax and swears by it. Okay. He says he'll never shoot another bow. He will shoot Matthews for the rest of his life. He is sold. He shot Diamond. He sh- the only thing he hasn't owned is a PSE. Again, I've shot a lot of PSE. I love those PSEs because they're short bows. They're freaking quick. They're a little heavier in the hand, which I like. I don't like such a, a, a light bow because it feels flimsy. I like a light bow. See, I don't. I, I would rather have something like... My bow sit or what's what's your bow at about three point six or three point four? I think it's three point three. Three point three. I can't remember I'm exactly. 3.5. It's very low. It's slightly lower than yours. Yeah, I, I, have, I have really 3.5. like that. And that like my bow is the max of how light I would go. Okay. I would not go any lighter than three and a half. See, I don't like a light shotgun, but I like a light bow. Hmm. Maybe it's just what I'm used to. It could be, yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. I haven't shot enough heavy bows. That could be. Yeah, I mean, a heavier bow, there's always a downside of if you got a whole draw for, you know, three, four minutes yeah. while you're waiting for a buck to come yeah. in, well, then, yeah, that's a lighter bow always helps. But I always like the heavier bows just because they they feel so nice in your hand when you're pulled back and... Like, they don't feel flimsy. They don't always want to twist. Like, I find with my bow, it, it always wants to twist. Mm-hmm. Like, I can see my cams twist. I just, I don't like that. Yeah. It, gives, it it takes away from the confidence I have shooting. Okay. Well, my diamond doesn't twist, so I'm, I'm used to a light bow that's solid and, yeah. and shoots where you point it. Yeah. Well, that's part of the, par- partially is the archer as well. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Because you got to do the work. Yeah. The bow is just sending it through. The bow is just a tool. Just a tool. Any shower thoughts yourself, or does that kind of cover things? Um. Yeah, that's kind of my covering. That was my shower thought on bulls. Yeah. Is it time to upgrade? Is it time to 
Okay, actually, you know what? I do have I do have one. Okay. Gear. We haven't talked about this. Now that we've kind of ran our gear through the paces, any changes so far? I did this buy a, a Cabela's multi-day pack. Oh, I actually yes, have not used right. it. I have not used it yet. Well? I've been... I I'm decided I was, you didn't I take would, that out. I decided week. I was going to keep it. But I'm like, cold feet. Ah, I'm going to leave it at home. I'm going to leave it at home. I'm going to leave it at home. Yeah. Well, oh. that that old backpack right there has, uh, since I've been home, has been on my back every time I've been hunting. Yeah. It's but, put some miles on already. Yeah, it has. And it's got a lot more miles to go. Hopefully those straps don't keep ripping. Nope. They haven't yet. I'm sure that was a one-off. I'm hoping it was. Because if not... I mean, I love this backpack. It's quiet walking through the bush. It's somewhat water resistant. It's comfortable on the back, which is huge, and it carries stuff. Yeah. So I need a backpack for it, really. Hey, the whole idea was to carry stuff. What does Fred Baird say? Your grandpa hunted in, in a red, black in a red flannel, red flannel coat. Just yeah. remember that. The best camouflage is be quiet and, and sit still. Sit still. Yeah. Well, there's 13 for you, folks. You know what I always say? Or what you always say? Finish your ribbons, you kids. Uh, good luck to everybody out there. As always. Uh, share your stories. Check out Jeff Martin Bohunts. Check out uh, Mark Canyon. The Meat Eater Boys. And last but not least, Cody Johnson, a fellow hunter, conservationist, put out a new album yesterday. New Go album. Out. Go check it out. Go check it out. It Go is, download it. It is great. You first, will not be disappointed. First listen to this podcast. Then go check it out. Yeah, but this is the end of the podcast. I'm just so they, telling them. Make they, sure they listen it to the end. Yeah. Because now they would have heard that and stopped listening. Yeah. Fit, and download this podcast. They, they already turned it off, though. Exactly. 